Hi, this will be first in the series of videos on calorimetry. Uh, in this video, we're going to look into the difference between heat and temperature and look into the concept of uh, specific heat capacity. So let's get started. Assume we have a glass of water. Now, the water molecules inside this glass, they are randomly, they are vibrating and due to this vibration they have some kind of kinetic energy and along with that vibration it also has some kind of chemical bonds uh, in this case namely the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules and and that is also a form of energy which is we call it the potential energy due to the chemical bonds now if we add them up what we have is the total internal energy of this glass of water. Now why are we talking about this? That's because there is a common misconception that when we say uh, you know water processes heat energy, this glass of water processes heat energy. So please don't say that. Uh, you know you can say the water processes internal energy due to its Ke and Pe. All right, so with that misconception aside, let's look at the idea of temperature and heat. So here's a, here's an image from PHET simulation. So we are heating in a vessel, and in the vessel we have uh, molecules of water, and they are all vibrating. Now the temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy of molecules due to the vibration and motion. In reality, temperature is nothing but a measure of average kinetic energy of these molecules. So more the vibration, more faster these molecules are moving, you will see that the temperature is also high. And note the word average kinetic energy of molecules. It's not that every molecule has same kinetic energy, it's the average that we are interested in. Now, by heat, we actually mean transfer of energy, heat energy. It's, it's not, uh, you know, heat, you cannot look at it as a noun, but it's more like, you know, transferring the heat energy. That's, uh, that's what we mean when we say uh, heat. And it's usually represented as delta Q. Now what exactly happens when, um, when this transfer of heat energy happens? Uh, you know, what happens is the, the molecules of, uh, of the byproducts of the burning, which is the carbon dioxide and the water molecule, they are vibrating at a very, very high velocity. So in this case, we have, uh, we have, you know, this fuel is, let's say, some hydrocarbon, let's say methane plus oxygen is giving you CO2 and uh, 2H2O. Um, of course, we need to balance these equations, so there'll be a 2 times oxygen. Right, so this is a highly exothermic reaction. So this is highly exothermic. What that means is these molecules are, are actually vibrating and they have uh, high kinetic energy, right? And this kinetic energy is being transferred into the bottom of the vessel. So the molecules of this, uh, the the molecules or atoms of this vessel, right? So, atoms of the vessel vibrate. And this vibration is in turn transferred into the water molecules, right? So, the vibration transferred to water molecules. This whole process of transfer of vibration, uh, 
the, the transfer of kinetic energy um, is actually what we imply by uh, you know transfer of heat energy so in summary the transfer of heat energy is actually transfer of kinetic energy from molecules of higher kinetic energy which is a CO2 and water molecules in fact when we say it's higher kinetic energy we directly imply that the temperature is also high so so in general we say heat flows from high temperature to lower temperature what we actually mean is the kinetic energy is transferred from um, you know the molecules of higher kinetic energy to the molecules of the lower kinetic energy now let's look at temperature the units of temperature they are Kelvin and shell Celsius um, we know that K is 273 plus uh, plus whatever is uh, in Celsius scale so in fact um, what you will find is that the boiling point of water is um, 100 plus 273 which is 373 Kelvin and the freezing point of water is 273 Kelvin um, the grading the number of grading between the freezing point and boiling point is 100 for Kelvin and also 100 for degrees Celsius so here are two questions what is 27 degrees Celsius in Kelvin now this is the easy one so we know that K is 273 plus 27 and that's approximately 300 Kelvin and if you see here that's you know 27 is somewhere here and 27 is somewhere here and it is it corresponds to 300 Kelvin all right so this is done now here's the next concept if you raise the temperature Delta T uh, by 27 degrees then what is the raise in temperature in Kelvin now this is a tricky one in a sense that you know if you think deeply about it let's say you know the initially the temperature is 273 now if you're raising the temperature by 27 degrees you will observe that here also the temperature is raised by 27 degrees uh, because between the freezing point and uh, boiling point there are 100 divisions and here also there are 100 divisions now since the number of divisions are same uh, you know the the amount of rise if here is 27 Kelvin this side will be 27 degrees Celsius so the raise of temperature Delta T if it is 27 degrees Celsius the raise of temperature in Kelvin will also be 27 Kelvin so that's a very very important concept uh, with respect to Kelvin and Celsius now that we understand the units of temperature let's look at the unit of heat assume that you have a beaker and you have uh, one gram of water and you're you're burning uh, you're burning in a Bunsen burner or a candle to raise the temperature of this water by one degree Celsius now by definition the amount of heat transferred which is Delta Q is defined as one calorie if we if that results the raise of temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin so in short one calorie is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius and this is a definition so this is how one calorie is defined now there are alternative units for energy and this is 
a foot calorie. A foot calorie is defined as uh, one foot calorie is thousand calories. Usually, foot calories is written as you know big C A L. So if you look at behind your food packet, it may be written fifty C A L, and that's that's you know I don't know it's some ways of cheating because this actually amounts to uh, you know the amount of energy we are talking about here is fifty thousand um, the small C A L, which is the normal calorie which we have defined. Um, so you can imagine that it's the amount of energy required um, to kind of raise maybe uh, you know uh, 10,000 or, or 50,000 grams or 50 kg water by one degree Celsius so so you can imagine that's a lot of a uh, lot of energy okay so now coming back to uh, the alternative units there was a famous physicist called Jules and he was uh, he was known for uh, you know doing a lot of experiments uh, in the process of brew you know you know figuring out uh, studying about how to brew beers and the temperature associated beer etc in one of the famous experiments he dropped a weight by a, and let it fall down by distance H and this resulted in the stirrer being stirring uh, getting stirred and due to um, you know due to its motion the temperature of this water increased so he observed you know what it takes to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius because that for one gram of water so if this is one gram of water um, you know what what would be the mechanical energy required to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius so let's assume that his weight was um, let's say half a kg or um, or maybe maybe point uh, four one eight kg so your mg is equal to 0.418 into 10 approximately and that would be 4.18 newton and, and he observed that i mean this is just a example he observed that if, if we let this weight fall down by one meter so the mechanical energy is mgh that is 4.18 into 1 meter that's 4.18 joules so he realized that uh, you know this mechanical energy is nothing but one calorie because by definition you use that energy to increase one gram of water by one degree celsius so in short um, you know we have a mechanical equivalent for energy which is one calorie is 4.18 joules by the way you th you know you don't need to know about this experiment it's it's interesting um, it's a it's an interesting snippet so that's why I add it but from your exam point of view this may not be uh, necessary so here for the experimental observation so far we know that by definition for mass is one gram of water if we want to raise the temperature by one kelvin or one degree celsius does not matter because it's delta t uh, delta q is defined as one calorie and ex and when we did the experimental observation we figured out that if you want to increase uh, two grams of water you need to burn the burner twice so that means your delta Q is two times more if the mass is three grams and if you want to raise the temperature by one Kelvin it's three times more and so on or in other words you know for one degree Celsius rise 
you know, if you have one gram, you need one calorie. If you have two grams, you need two calorie, and so on. That's what this means. Delta Q is proportional to M. So it is also observed through experiment that delta Q uh, is proportional to delta T. Now what this means is, um, you know, let me write, draw this in separate color. So delta Q is proportional to uh, delta T. What this means is, if you have mass equal to constant, uh, mass is one gram, let's say water, that's what we are talking about here. For one degree Celsius rise, you need, by definition, this is one calorie. Two degree Celsius rise, it is two calorie. Three degree Celsius rise, it's three calorie, and so on. That's what this means. So both of this can be combined uh, to write something as follows. This both can be combined to write something as follows. Q equal to M into some constant into delta T. Now, to understand this constant C, let's write C as Q by M delta T. Now let's take water. For water, the C will be, you know, or rather I should have written delta Q here. So delta Q, delta Q is, uh, is nothing but the, the, the heat energy required to raise the temperature by delta T. So you can write C as delta Q by M delta T. So for water, if let's say delta Q is one calorie by definition, mass is one gram, delta T is one degree Celsius. So we can write the value of this constant as one calorie per gram per degree Celsius. And this C is what we call as specific heat capacity of water in this particular case. So it's called the specific heat capacity, but in this particular case, uh, we are talking about water, so it's the specific heat capacity uh, for water. So in conclusion, we can write delta Q as MC delta T, and specific heat capacity of water is one calorie per gram per Kelvin. It can also be written as 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. Um, specific heat capacity for ice is 0.5 calorie per gram per Kelvin. It can also be written as 2.1 because you multiply 0.5 by 4.18. It's 2.09 which is approximately 2.1. And for copper, it's 0.385 joules per gram per Kelvin. Let's do some problems to understand this. So the first question is, what's the amount of heat energy required to change two grams of ice from minus 30 to minus 20 degrees Celsius? So your delta Q is given by MC delta T, or in other words, M is two grams, C for ice is 0.5 grams, sorry, calories, per gram per degree Celsius or Kelvin, doesn't matter, uh, and into delta T is T2 minus T1. And in this case, this is nothing but uh, into T2 is minus 20 minus of minus 30. This is um, 1 if you multiply this quantity and that will be equal to 50 calorie the answer is in calories so that's that's how much energy is required 
So similarly, let's look at the second one. Delta Q equal to MC delta T. M is 10 grams. This is water, so this is one calorie per gram per degree Celsius. And into T2 minus T1 is 100 minus 20. That'll be 800 calories. Now, the third problem is same as the second one. It's just that you know you are you are looking at bringing down the temperature from 100 to 20. So in this particular case, delta Q is M C delta T, which is 10 grams into one calorie per gram per degree Celsius into 20 minus 100 or this is minus 800 calorie so instead of giving you're taking out uh, you know you're, you're slowing down the vibration you're taking out the kinetic energy from the water which is which means you're slowing down the vibration um, so that's what we mean by delta Q is minus 800 calorie so let's do the last one um, for 10 gram of copper delta Q is M is 10 gram into C of copper is I think 0 0.095 calorie per gram per degree Celsius into delta T would be 100 minus 20 so I leave the rest of the calculation to you to find out what this would be um, how much calorie it would be so here is a summary of what we have looked so far we looked at um, heat versus temperature and we said uh, temperature is measure of average internal kinetic energy of molecule um, heat is a tra you know heat is essentially uh, transfer of heat energy which happens through the vibration and collision of molecules um, a body does not possess heat but total internal energy uh, due to its kinetic and potential energy and the unit is calorie or joules and unit for temperature is Kelvin or degree Celsius we also looked at uh, the equation Delta Q is MC Delta T and we saw uh, you know how to do uh, different problems using that so here are some checkpoint questions um, for you to do to try out and understand um, see if you have understood this whole session um, see you until the next one ciao